Hi guys. Well, I thought I'd give you an update on things. Over the last uh, week and a half, and I, I know it's been a little while since the last video, well, I shot a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, I wasn't sure how to work any of the individual pieces into a video by themselves. So I thought I'd just, uh, there's been so much going on, I just thought I'd just fill you in. So, uh, first off, homebrew antenna builds. Well, uh, Randy, KJ7MPZ, one of the owners here, He's a relatively new ham, and uh, for his studio, he has a radio in there that they like to use to monitor the local repeaters and the local emergency services like fire dispatch, ambulances, police, and so on. Um, out here, you're deep in a wooded area. I'll have some imagery that I'll put up to really illustrate it, but Oregon is hill after hill after hill of massive pine trees and fir trees and other types of trees. It's just all trees. So one of the things that they're always worried about, especially this time of year, the dry time of year, is fires. And we're going to have a little bit of information about that coming up here shortly. <laughs> uh, so uh, they like to have a radio in their studio so they can monitor the local repeaters. Repeaters are very important out here. Very important. Uh, it's so hilly that most people live on, on the slopes of hills or in the valleys, and direct line of sight communication is just not reliable, uh, especially on VHF. And without the repeaters, you wouldn't be able to talk to people more than a mile or two away because then you, you hit a hill or a mountain. So uh, it's, it's real important that they have communications there, reliable communications. And he got a nice Yezu radio and uh, needed, a, needed a base antenna. They were using a little twin lead J-pole that they like to use portable, he wanted something more permanent. He was going to buy a diamond, and I said, why not just build one? You know, uh, and I pointed him at my video on the Slim Jim, and I thought this will be a good uh, experiment. Let him use just my video and the resources linked in it to see if he can build his antenna. And he was quite successful. How's your build coming, Randy? Well, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I got this idea from KB9RLW. And I've heard of him. Yeah, it's a famous guy. And uh, it's a Slim Jim antenna. I need a new antenna for my uh, base station, which is up in my studio. And it was recommended to me that I do this antenna because it's an easy build for a first timer. I've only been in the hobby for about a year. And it's also a pretty decent antenna. So Rocking. I went online and I looked at the instructions and I memorized them and I got out all the tools I need, including refreshing beverage. I made a detailed drawing of what it is I'm going to build, and I also have the <laughs> video on video hand for on reference because I'm my detailed drawing is not that detailed. <laughs> and uh, we got the top done over here and soldered. The wire came to me courtesy of KB9RLW. Mm -hmm. Top soldered, and I went and I got the bottom soldered, and it said 59 inches, and it looked like the diagram said from right from the corner to corner. So I did that. That's right. Yeah. And I feel very confident that that's pretty, very close. All right, well, I'll, I'll let you uh, continue working. All right. So the Slim Jim is working very well for Randy. Uh, he's picking up repeaters and getting into repeaters further away than he used to get with the J-Pole. He's very happy with it. And he's picking up uh, dispatch and fire from Eugene and Florence, which are very far away considering the hilly terrain. So uh, it's working out quite well. Uh, another thing that he and TR, his wife, like to do is they like to mountaintop. Uh, they go up to a mountain here called Roman Nose, which is one of the highest peaks in the area, and they like to get up there and get on two meters and see how far away they can get with the altitude. And uh, he wanted a better antenna, and I said, well, let's build a Yagi, and to make it portable, we'll build a tape measure Yagi. It's a real common design used for, like, for fox hunters and, and portable operations. And so I pointed them at a video, uh, which had detailed instructions. I, I haven't done one myself because there's just too many of them. It, it would be redundant. There's so many videos out there on building a tape measure Yagi uh, and uh, let him go. And uh, Randy worked on that for an afternoon and put together his own tape measure Yagi, which he's quite proud of. And it works really well. It's uh, got a little bit of gain. I think they say around 7 dB of gain and it's quite portable. So we went up to Roman Nose to play with the radio and put the Yagi up on the back of Randy's truck 
and uh, he called CQ on 5-2, and right away he had a contact over 20 miles away with only 5 watts. CQ, CQ, KJ7, MPZ, top of Roman Nose Mountain, Douglas County, CQ, 146.52. N7 QIO. N7 QIO. KJ7 MPZ from Coburg. I'm catching you on top of Roman Nose Mountain. How are you doing today? I'm oh, doing alright. I'm sitting at the truck stop here in Coburg uh, waiting to pick up my load tomorrow morning. Call here is November 7, Quebec, India, November. And the name is Bert Bravo Echo Romeo Tango. Over. Well, he got that one contact in, and we were thinking we were going to have a nice afternoon of playing radio up there. And I was planning on making the antenna builds and that the subject of this video. But then Randy looked up and said, oh, is that a fire? And we looked over and we saw a big plume of white smoke rising from a hill about nine miles away. And I started shooting some video and we started watching it and we turned the, the radios all on to different dispatch frequencies. We were going to call 911, but then as soon as we turned the radio on, we discovered that uh, Oregon uh, Department of Forestry was already on it and were dispatching and calling for assistance uh, from other uh, services. So we spent the afternoon sitting up there on the mountain watching the fire grow and uh, it became three fires separated by distance about a mile apart which eventually burned together and became uh, two big fires and it didn't look like they were going to get it under control they called in uh, helicopters they called in multiple fire departments and started working the fire the yagi worked really well for listening to the dispatchers from the various areas and regions we could swing it around and we could hear um, uh, emergency services that we had a hard time hearing on the vertical on his truck so we were really happy to have that Yagi up there. The forest fires have grown it is now uh, four days later and they are still fighting them. They are about seven miles away from uh, our community here at Leisureland uh, but they are seven miles to the west and they are moving south and we are separated by many hills and ridges we would have plenty of notice if the fires started moving in this direction and we have a clear evac route to the east. So we're in no, no danger here at all. We'd have plenty of warning and time to get out if we needed to. But uh, that made for a very interesting afternoon and evening watching the fires from up there on the mountain. Uh, so yeah, it's been, a, been kind of an eventful week. Um, I've ordered some more stuff. I've got a portable uh, 1080 uh, LCD display coming that's designed to be used with Raspberry Pis, and I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model on the way. I need to look into several ham radio related Raspberry Pi projects that I've uh, run across and, and I had a viewer recommend one that he's done. So we're going to look at those as soon as that hardware gets here. Uh, and also, I'm getting ready to move, so there will be a Thoughts on the Road video coming up probably next week as I get ready to head back to the southwest desert uh, for the winter season. So that's a quick update for you. Well, I don't know about quick. There's a lot of media in here. <laughs> it might be a long video, uh, but I just wanted to you know, catch everybody up on what's been going on. So, yeah, we built a couple of antennas. Well, uh, Randy built his first homebrew pro brew projects. It was quite successful. He's real happy with that. And it was, uh, it was really exciting for me to see his excitement at his success uh, with building his first homebrew antennas. And that was fun. So uh, that's what's going on. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Like I say, it'll probably be a Thoughts on the Road. Or maybe not. Maybe this will cover that for you. Um, I've shot lots of media here at Leisureland, which is the name of the community, and I might do a feature on it um, uh, in a future video, but uh, I think the next one might be Raspberry Pi related because that display and my Pi 4 should be here by the weekend, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing with those. So thanks for hanging in there with me, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. 
Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.